All right. Hi. Um, my name is Luve, and I'm going to see if I get this thing to work. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm a front-end developer here at Kit, um, and I work together with Jakob, Christopher, Robert, um, Patrick, and Fredrik, of course, uh, which are all here, and we're a couple more that couldn't be here tonight. And I'm not going to talk about um, anything in particular that we built with Kit. I'm going to talk about something that I have wanted to build for a lot of years, but I always thought it um, it will take too much time and it wouldn't give me that much back and it would be a hassle to to keep up to date and keep working. Um, but then on one of our, we have hack days sometimes here, so I spend a day trying to, to create a, like a prototype of this and I found that it was actually quite simple to do it yourself without any frameworks, any specific NPM packages. Um, and what I'm going to talk about is um, CSS documentation um, or do-it-yourself CSS style guide. So it's not a style guide for you to be stylish, um, but we do want to transform the code into something more stylish. Um, and as you might know, there is a couple of packages. If you just go on GitHub, you'll find different frameworks and, and NPM packages that will do this for you and they will read your CSS code and they will just bundle everything up nice and tight into a little app and it will just work. Uh, the problem for me has always been that I want, I don't, that's never 100% what I want. I want to mix the automated content with custom content and I want to control what uh, I can put into comments in the CSS. I want to do stuff that are project specific. Uh, right here for Kit, I built it for our story engine product, that CSS framework. And nothing, no package out on GitHub did everything. And it, I would just spend a lot of time trying to bend that to my will. And it would take a lot of time. So I just quit uh, all the time that I tried. But this was actually the first thing that me and Patrick, our, um, our designer, talked about when we met the first time that we this time we're going to build a beautiful style guide so that we can go uh, somewhere and we can look at all the things that we've built in CSS you can just when he designs he wants to know uh, does this exist or not and I don't remember uh, what a particular object looks like in markup for example so I just have somewhere to go um, and that's pretty much why um, and it's also because naming stuff it's not easy. <laughs> and in CSS, it's often something that you just do. The naming in CSS, it, you, you, I don't spend, I, com I, I confess, not at all as much time trying to figure out cute names for my stuff as I do in JavaScript. In, in CSS, um, it's quite easy to, to fall into the trap of putting names that really isn't, doesn't work in the long run. Um, so if you if you do that, it's quite hard to understand just from reading the name or the file name what this is. What is this, what is it supposed to be? And it's also not really well. Here you you can probably uh, visualize in your head what this is going to produce, but a more complicated CSS rule. It's it's quite hard to understand all the all the dynamics of it, especially if you do. Uh, a lot of nested elements in a flex box, for example, it's it's going to be tricky. So to have some place to just go and look how it renders, uh, it's quite nice. And especially if you start adding a lot of variations, um, the large one, of course, it's going to be larger. But I, I, I can't say how large, but I can look at the code, of course. Positive, yeah, it's probably going to be, I guess, green. Uh, but then as further down you go, these variations is going to suffer from the same naming thing uh, that we I mentioned before. As a button, I'm, I'm not. It's it's not totally clear to me after one year what what the hell I was I meant by when I re wrote that. So that's also a reason just to not write the same CSS code over and over again because you don't remember that you built the card box pod car thing or whatever before. And it actually works in 99% the same way. Um, and also, if you don't have 
a magical script that goes on to your site after each push to production and, sh and checks that all the CSS renders exactly as you want it. This is also a good place to just take all that rendered markup and put it in the kitchen sink on one page. And you can always look and see if your objects have been affected by your updates, which I actually do. We're quite smart. Um, yeah, and GitHub is full of CSS style guide generators, but I didn't want something that generated both the, the data from the CSS that parsed the CSS files and also built me an app in some sort of framework. Day to day, I, I build, I code Angular. So I don't want, it's much harder for me to just to, to go into someone's, someone else's package that renders a React app and go in and, and customize that. I want to build it in Angular because that takes me 20 minutes to get going. Um, and this is not all, all, all for me. Uh, as I said, Patrick wanted this as well because when he designs, he told me he it's much easier for him. He doesn't have to care about pixels. Um, um, he, he can just say, oh, it's going to be a list, or this is going to be a box, and it's going to be a couple of buttons. And uh, the margins, he doesn't have to match in his sketches. So he can just put them on, put them in, like pretty much like a wireframe. Uh, so he doesn't have to put a lot of time into that. And also, he can go and look at all the stuff that we have built, because I've built stuff that he doesn't know about all the time, um, especially in CSS. And also, Jakob, uh, my closest colleague, that we're the front-end team, uh, we both build stuff that we don't, we don't always talk about all the CSS that we write every day. So I'm not 100% up to date with the code that he's written yesterday, and vice versa, of course. And whenever we get, if we're going to get an intern this January, and it's going to be much easier for her to sit down and build uh, and new projects around our CSS framework. When she has a clear documentation, you can just go up to the uh, go to the site and, and look at. It. So, how did I do this? And this is I don't have a, an, an an npm package that I want you to download. I don't have I don't even have a GitHub account for this a repo for this. I just want to show you that it it was really easy to just the only thing you want is you want some sort of structured version of your CSS comments um, in a way that I want it. So you want something to parse your CSS code, get the comments, and just figure out what what parameters you want to you want to look up and how they're supposed to be saved. And then you want to save that. And I did that in a separate thing. So that's one part where I just parse and create that CSS JSON file, which it ended up to be. And then I built a simple Angular app that just read that JSON file. So in the end, I could just upload everything to S3, and it just works. And every time you do a push to production, you can do this as well. So um, right now, it's in the same repo as our main app project. But I, I can't see a problem why you can, if you have your CSS in, an, in, its, in its own private NPM package, for example, it's just, you can do the same thing. You just um, have to package it a little bit different. Um, so dependencies is really up to you. Um, I chose Angular um, for ease. I did it with Gulp, and I used an NPM package called Comment Parser. But apparently, the the world is full of parsers for comments, and this parser is really meant not to to parse CSS. It, it's meant to parse uh, JS doc comments. And that worked fine for me. And just as sugar, I used something called S CSS stats, and that just parses your files and, and figure out what, how many selectors you have, what kind of specificity you have. That's one word I, I will never use, learn to, to say. Spe oh, whatever. I'm not going to say it again. Um, and since I wanted to write markdown in the comments, I had to parse that too. And prism.js, that was just because I wanted color in the code examples. But you can use whatever you want. That's, uh, I think, the, the good thing about this, that you get you just generate a JSON file, and all of you know how to throw up an app, whatever framework you're using, uh, and par read from a, CS from a JSON file and create stuff from that. It's, it's not that hard, really. 
Um, so with CSS through npm, I, as I said, I didn't do that. I just put everything in the in our just beside our source folder. Um, so the the uh, my gulp script just reads from the from the asset CSS folder. But you can if you have your CSS in a in a private npm package, it, it I guess it wouldn't be a problem. Let's look at some code. So, um, in the first um, POC I, I did, uh, it was a mess of spaghetti code. But in the end, uh, I ended up with this. So this is the gulp task that that generates everything. And the style guide uh, is the the script that I just created to to parse CSS. So I used the the comment parser thing to get the the basic parsing information, and then I model around that data to get what I wanted. So I parsed the directory, just our our full SAS folder. Um, and I didn't convert the SAS to CSS. I just went with the SAS files. Um, and then I just saved it to a comment, uh, to a comment blocks JSON file. Quite simple. Um, what I, uh, well, I'm gonna show you some code before I do this. All right, so the point is to convert this in your CSS file. I suppose this is also like a pro, as a, if, unless you don't you hate writing comments in your code, because then this is not for you. And, and I suppose if you you don't build a product as much as you build WordPress sites, then it's not really apply, applicable as well. But if you have like a larger product that you really you have a large CSS library that you want to document in a good way. Um, I'd say this is a quite good way to go. But you want to convert this to some sort of structured format together with all the other comments you have. In a, um, as a rule, I put in two stars. That would that will be parsed. One star will not. So you can, and and also of course, regular comments, CSS comments will not be parsed. Um, and I want to convert this into an object and all the stuff that belongs to this main object, uh, the button object. Um, I want to create, so, oh, sorry, go to the top. So this is the main object. Um, and then you have, you have states, you have variations, uh, you have different, we use BAM, you can use whatever you want, I suppose. Um, and that's the good thing as well. You, if you use something else, if you call it atoms, uh, it's fine. You just call it atoms when you parse. So in the style guide, the only thing that I really built was this. It was 191 lines of code. And I parse a directory where I just you know, uh, look for all the files, make sure they are CSS files or SAS files, and then just run them through this parse file loop where I do my own stuff that I like, I want to do, um, put everything in the format that I like. Um, and I also uh, wanted the hierarchy in the, in the object that I wanted the first comment to be the main comment and then everything else under it in the same document would be rules. Uh, and I use the file names to to distinguish if it's an object and also what the name was. And this CSS stats was just an NPM package I found works fine. And the rest of it is just a sim simple Angular app that loads this, um, this, this JSON file and creates this. So from the, the comments, you get just a list of all the stuff that you have, and you get examples, you get the code, and also a brief summary of what this file consists of, the variations, the elements, and you get all the the rendering. And I think I spent like two hours on the Angular app. It it's not that complicated um, if you if you do that every day. <laughs> um, 
so the the hard part was to figure out the the, rent, the parsing of the CSS code, and even that wasn't really that hard. And that was the reason I wanted to talk about it because it was really easy. It took me a, a day to do this, um, and I really thought the reason I didn't do it before was I thought this is going to take a lot of time, and I have to bend to someone's weird structure and the way they thought think. Um, what I haven't done yet is the kitchen sink. And I don't know what I, I thought. I, I was really cute when I named our style guide "Kitchen Sink" with K K I T in capital letters. No one else in the team really thought that was, <laughs> <laughs> but I still think it's awesome. Uh, I haven't really dealt with variables, which I would like to do, uh, and of course mixins and functions, and also theming, what something that we're going to do in our app like next year um as i said i didn't have i don't have a, a github repo for this it's not something finished in any way i just wanted to like tell you that it was easy <laughs> um and that's pretty much it if you don't have any questions no thank you oh right yeah yeah sure yeah, will I put it on GitHub? I I think my my plan is not like an npm package. It's more a, a repo on GitHub with an example setup, together with the the app that you want to document, and then the the small Angular app that just creates the the documentation. Yeah, I just didn't have the time today to do that. <laughs> but that's yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've tried everyone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, if I tried any other, uh, I, I suppose you mean like full-on solution. Yeah, yeah. I, I tried. I don't. I, I wouldn't say all of them, but most of them. Yeah. And the thing is, I, I wanted. I wanted to add a lot more to it, and it just took more time to do that than it took me to build this. And it pretty much ends up with the same thing. Although I'm in control, I know exactly where, how it works, and um, yeah, and I can add to the app as much as I want. Jeff. Yeah. 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 That's only because we use. Yeah, that's only because we use BEM as the. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I why I put like the first comment as the main block um, in my JSON file, and then all the uh, subsequent comments will be uh, like children of that block, and that's only because we use BEM as a like a pattern when we write CSS. If you use something else, that might not be logical, but that's the thing. You can, when you just parse it, you get a long, long list of comments, and you just have to go through them, and and like package them in the way you want. So that's the only reason. So all the every file is one object, I suppose. So button is one file, and that's one object. So the first CSS rule is going to be the main object, and then everything else is going to be elements and variations. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, but that that's how we did it. I, I think it's easier if you just split it up in files. Yeah. Yeah, but if you have one big file, then you probably have to do something else when you parse the CSS code. Yeah. True. No more? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh,